when our Lord Jesus came into this world, he invested his life for three and a half years in 12 people, not multitudes. John chapter 2 says like this, that many followed um, him, many came to uh, eat what the Lord gave, but he did not commit himself to them, says John chapter 2. Lord Jesus did not commit himself to everybody who came to listen to him. For he knew what was inside a man. He only picked, hand-picked the twelve of them, and whom he called disciples and later apostles. He invested in raising them up. You know, they all sat where he sat. They slept under the same tree where our Lord slept. Um, they sat on a, you know, as the Lord sat on a rock and taught, you know, kept teaching. They, they sat on the hill and they heard him and they followed him all the way to the cross and they left him there. Lord Jesus even now is not interested in the multitudes who call themselves Christians. He's interested in those who would really call themselves disciples, true followers of Jesus. That's why to Peter and to the 12 disciples, Lord Jesus um, did not give a commission to just go build a big church. The commission was this. Shall we turn to Matthew chapter 28? Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, 19, and 20. So that I'll remind you, what is the primary focus of every Christian should be? What is the primary focus of Lord Jesus, the commandment that he gave for the church? Jesus said, verse 18, Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go therefore, make disciples. All authority has been given, you go and make disciples. A lot of churches have missed the focus of making disciples. The Lord Jesus did not start a nice, wonderful um, teaching class, nor he uh, just invested in uh, himself in uh, a nice institution or an organization. He gave his life as an example. Nowadays, uh, what we need really is godly examples, people who are authentically following Christ. As Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Shall we all say amen? amen. May, may we say, Lord willing, by the end of this year, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen again? Amen. How many of you really want to do that? We should be able to say, because Jesus did not come to make us more, oh, we cannot be like Jesus. That's not what's the aim. He said, I will, you know, the aim of the Father is to make us more conform to the image of Jesus. If you and I are becoming the image of Jesus, oh, you might say, my life is not really well. A lot of things people say, oh, I can't be a disciple. Who is a true disciple? You know, you might have uh, uh, grown up, might have heard about Paramananda, right? Paramananda is You know, one time it seems that he wanted to invite a guest to uh, dinner. And he said, hey, prepare a nice meal for the guest. Uh, and then all the disciples sat down and said, what shall we prepare for our guest? And the first one said, you know, let's make a nice brinjal curry. But the other said, no, no, no. You know, eggplant is not good for us. You know, it will create some kind of itching. Let's not. And somebody said, let's pick a some vegetable. And he said, no, 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 that's not also good. And they end up making a curry with, uh, with uh, leaves of an unheard uh, plant. Tipatiga, uh, to be precise in the they make a curry and then the, the master comes and sees them cook a meal that nobody can eat. The master puts a meal in his mouth and says, is this really something worth eating? The reason why I am quoting is that, um, is this, those people were um, really not following their master. They were doing whatever they want. But Jesus is not really interested in those who live however they want. What are the mark of a true disciple? You know, from the scripture I've been sharing this and I've um, sent an email to all the church. What are the marks of a true disciple of Lord Jesus? These are not my words, but these are the words of Lord Jesus. The first mark of a true disciple, it's put up there if you can look up Gospel of Luke chapter 9, verse 23 says like this. If anyone would like to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. That is the first mark and true mark of those who want to follow Christ. If we don't deny ourselves, we are not really a disciple. If you are not able to overcome temptation and overcome sin in your life, 
You cannot be a true disciple. Secondly, the second mark of a true disciple of Jesus. Gospel of Andrew, Luke chapter 14. If you have your Bible there, or um, you can just look there and then I will read it for you. Luke chapter 14 says like this, and verse 26 says like this. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. The definition of a disciple according to Lord Jesus is the one who would hate his father and mother. Why is Lord Jesus teaching against the Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments says, honor your father and mother, right? Now Lord Jesus is saying, hate your father, hate your mother, hate your brother, hate your sister, hate your own life. My dear brothers and sisters, what you have to understand the point is this. You can never follow Jesus unless you love him more than everybody else, including your own life. You cannot truly be a disciple of Jesus unless you deny yourself completely. That is the second mark of a true disciple. If you love your life, you can never be a disciple. That's why Lord Jesus says, those who like to find their life will lose it. Those who like to lose their life will find it. It's in Telugu and Tamil, it's really well um, phrased uh, uh, that verse. But in, in English, it's not that uh, greatly phrased. The third mark of a true disciple is this. The same chapter, Luke chapter 14 and verse 33 it says like this. So therefore, anyone who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. These are the definition of who a true disciple is in the very words of Lord Jesus, not mine. The one who is willing to give up everything. That's why you know the story. One uh, rich young ruler comes and asks Jesus, what shall I do to inherit uh, eternal life? So Lord Jesus says, go sell all that you have and come follow me. Because this man was very extremely rich. He says, no, 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 this is a very hard saying. Jesus is, Jesus is saying that I should give up everything. Those who love their life and their possessions will never find eternity. Those are not my words, but those are the words of Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Listen carefully so that we won't miss what a true discipleship is. Gospel of John chapter 8. Let me just read it so that you will not miss these seven marks. I've already sent that in the email, you can look that up later. Gospel of John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. So Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. If you abide in the words of Lord Jesus, that shows that you are the disciple of Christ Jesus. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That's what he says in the verse 32. If you remain in God's word, that shows that you are a disciple of Jesus. A lot of people are not interested in the word of Jesus at all. The word of the Lord. So, how can you really say that they are truly disciples of Christ Jesus? That is the fourth mark. The fifth mark of a disciple is this. You know, we have read these before. John chapter 15. Let me just read it for your sake so that you won't miss it. John chapter 15 and verse 8. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. When you bear much fruit, that is a proof that you and I are disciples. What does it mean by bearing fruit? Being more like Christ. That is the proof that you and I are disciples. Sixth, John chapter 13. This is very important now um, for all of us. Verse 34 and verse 35. The sixth mark um, of the disciple is this. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I loved you. So also you ought to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have loved one another. Loving one another is a mark. If you have hatred against your own brother and say, I love the Lord, you're a liar, says 1 John chapter 4. You know, we should love others as Jesus loved. We always put and say, oh, oh, Jesus' love is so high and our love is next. But Jesus never said like that. You should not compare my love with your love. 
Jesus said, learn to love like me, he said. The proof that he loved is he gave his life. He loved us and he gave up himself for us. When we love each other, how we should love each other is even to the point of death. You know, for a sick husband or wife or your child, if somebody's sick and say, oh, I love you, I love you. But if you don't show that in action, you just love in words. That's not true love. True love goes to the point of giving your own life. That is the mark of a true disciple. Lastly, John chapter 12 and 24, 25, 26. Here is, this is the secret for the blessed spiritual life. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. Whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. What a wonderful verse. If you love your life, you lose it. If you do not love your life, if you hate your own life, if you hate, if you love our Lord Jesus, you will definitely find your life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. Where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, my father will honor him. Those are the seven marks of a true disciple of Lord Jesus. You know, what, how, how should we live as a disciple? If you understand that basic John 12, 24, unless a grain of wheat falls and dies, it remains by itself. But if it dies, it brings forth much grain. Listen carefully, please. We should be willing to deny, we should be willing to die for our own desires. I'm not talking about physical death here. Jesus was not also talking about physical death. Physical death would be much easier, you know, when we try to deny ourselves. Recently, we heard about the death of a young man, 39-year-old young man, you know, who was married just last year. Who we went to the city of Hyderabad, he had a nice dinner with all his friends, and the next day morning, he had a massive heart attack. 39-year-old man died. A young wife at his, next to his casket. It's not a tragedy to die young. Mark these words. It's not a tragedy to die young. It would be a great tragedy to die old and not live and fulfill the purposes that God has for you. Even if you live a long life, and if you have not lived what the Lord is really wanting of you, it will be just vain. At the end of that long life, we stand before him and says, have you followed me? The answer is no. Jesus is only 33 and a half years, but his life was full of purpose. Then how should we really live as good disciples? Now come to Matthew chapter 10. We will get into um, what the Lord needs to teach us today. How the disciples, most of the believers just come and sit and listen to the word of God and go back home and live as if just like the world, they dress like the world, they speak like the world, they sing like the world, they dance like the world. And we call ourselves Christians. You know what a uh, shame for the Lord. Our Lord's name is blasphemed because of our own actions. We dress like them, we sing like them, we dance like them, we do all the things that like the world does. And there is nothing different in our lifestyle, in our way of speaking, in our way of our, in our singing, in our, um, in our living. If you just go to the world and sing all the worldly stuff and come back and worship the Lord from the same mount will the salt water and good water come, says James. With the same tongue, you curse others and you bless the Lord. You see that? That's our lifestyle. And we call ourselves Christians. That's a tragedy. How should Christians live? Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. He called to him his 12 disciples. And he gave them authority over the mean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The disciple is the one who is being called by the Lord and who has the authority of the Lord. Mark this word, please. You should be not only called by the Lord, but the Lord called his 12 and gave them the authority. You know the organizations of this world, whatever college, whatever school, whatever institution, whatever office, can never give you the authority of heaven. You know, when Lord Jesus came, he did not really uh, establish an institute or an organization. An institute or an organization can never teach you how to follow Jesus. 
Here, Lord, when Lord Jesus came in the three and a half years, he worked with the disciples. He called them and he gave them authority. He said, now go. You see that he gave them authority over every unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. My dear brothers and sisters, most of the Christians are, you know, all of our Christians who really are disciples of Jesus have the authority of heaven. They are, we are the children of the living God, but we live like beggars. What a tragedy. You have the treasure of heaven. You have all the power of heaven, authority of heaven, but we live as if we don't have authority. Lord Jesus gave us the authority over every unclean spirit, every disease, and then every affliction. How many of you really believe that? Say, shall we say amen? Oh, a lot of people have come down and, and started preaching and saying, oh, Jesus has stopped healing. Don't believe it. My dear brothers and sisters, don't believe that. He says, if somebody says, Lord has stopped healing, you just say, that is that your word or is this the word of God that says? If they're, if they're not pointing to anything from here, they are just making up their own theories. Jesus has given authority to his disciples. If you are the disciple of Lord Jesus, you will have authority in your life. What do you mean? You know, just not reading the scripture. If you truly follow, you'll have the power of Jesus resting with you. You know, that's what how Jesus lived, Matthew chapter 7. You know, every place Jesus went, first he preached, he taught, not just preached. You know, only very few places you see that Jesus preached, but most of the time he taught. He, you know, teaching is the primary work of Lord Jesus. Then he healed. In the greatest message that Jesus uh, taught, what we call it as a Sermon on the Mount, what people call it as a Sermon on the Mount. You look at chapter 7 and the last two verses, Matthew chapter 7, last two verses. When Jesus finished these things, the crowd were astonished at his teaching. For he was teaching them as the one who had authority, not as their scribes. There are scribes and Pharisees of this world who, who preach and teach. But when Jesus stood up, he taught as the one who had the authority. Because he truly has authority. For those of them, they have learned, that's all. But their life do not have authority. Sadly, many Christians in life, we have good Bible knowledge, but no spiritual authority. You know, Bible knowledge is good. Memorize the scripture, read the scripture, study the scripture, memorize the scripture. That is great. You know, when the Pharisees came, uh, when the Sadducees came, Lord Jesus said like this, you neither know the scripture nor the power of God, he said. Some people only know the scripture and they don't know the power of God. Some people only focus on the power of God, but they don't know the scripture. But Lord Jesus says like this, you know, he spoke the scripture and he had the power and authority. A disciple, you and I will be a true disciples, not only the one who would just read the scripture, but the one who walked with the authority of Lord Jesus. That's why when he called the disciples, he said, hey, it's not more than your head knowledge. You know uh, uh, the word. They know the Old Testament. And they have seen Lord Jesus. But he says, I give you the authority now. As a disciple of Jesus, you and I have authority. That's why we read in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. All authority has been given to me. Now go make disciples. Most of the churches are more interested in making, you know, church membership. We're all church membership today, But most of the churches are really not focusing on raising disciples. My dear brothers and sisters, may this, may the Lord help us this year that I want to be a disciple. Shall we say amen? Yes. How many of you understand? I want to be a disciple. I want to be a true disciple. And I want to make disciples. I want to make disciples. I don't see hands at all. Maybe this is a very tricky question. Uh, that, uh, Pastor, is signing us up for. No, I'm not giving you any big question. If you are a true disciple of Christ Jesus, make that your aim. Don't be just some church attender who just come for a worship service and listen to a good message and go back home. Jesus is not interested in that kind of thing. There are tons of those. There are tons of churches who just, you know, are preaching only to make people comfortable. They are sitting in the pew and going straight to hell. It would be a tragedy, right? God will hold me accountable for CBF. Whether I've got the whole council or not, he's going to come hold all those pastors accountable. Where there are thousands and thousands of congregations who just come and sit, and if they don't believe, and if they don't become disciples, they would end up in lake of fire, 
They would even accuse those pastors. I don't be one of those. So I diligently pray and ask the Lord, Lord, tell each one to be a disciple. So if you're a disciple, you'll walk in the authority of Jesus. You're not scared of some, you know, disease that comes or, you know, the demon that torments or some darkness that comes. You and I have authority because Jesus says so. It seems there was a, a police guy. Recently he got a job in, in a police department. Uh, but that fellow was a big coward, you know. He was fearful of everything. Um, he was so scared of uh, thieves. And even the night, he would get two, three times to check all the doors and the windows and nobody is around. And then he got a job to be a constable. Next day, he wears an hour, a police dress. Uh, he got a night duty because uh, because those who are very, you know, appointed uh, newly, they put them in the nights. And those who work for a while, they'll get a nice day duty. Uh, this fellow was said in the night, he was dressed up and goes out of the house at 11 o'clock in the night. And one thief was coming straight into his house. He saw the police officer and he started running. But police officer, you know, this fellow looked at the thief and he ran inside. And then it looks like his wife asked, hey, why did you run back inside? He says, I saw a thief coming. But he went down and checked, uh, the thief ran away. The thief ran away not because of this fellow who, had, uh, who was capable of doing something. You know what the thief looked at? The thief looked at what? Yes. His uniform, his clothes, and then he ran away. You know, he has authority, but that fellow did not recognize that. Most of the Christians are like that. You and I wear the name of Jesus. You know, the Christian is the one who is not just labeled. Christ means anointed. You know, if you are a true believer, you are anointed by the Holy Spirit. When the evil sees you, he sees Christ in you. You know, we have, I've said that several times, you know, Paul was going to the city of uh, Philippi, a little girl who was demon possessed. You know what she said? These are the servants of the Most High God. How did she know? She did not go to the crusades that Paul um, raised. She knows clearly whom he believes. You and I have authority, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, if there is sickness, if there is evil, there is darkness, you don't have to fear. Because the Lord said, Gospel of Luke chapter 10. Shall we turn that to you, please? Well, the disciples, this is what Jesus has done. This is what, you know, the worldly institutions, um, like those who want to really serve God and live for God, they say, hey, uh, you go to a nice Bible college or seminary. I've been to a Bible college and seminary. You know, what the Bible college cannot teach me is this, how to pray. What the Bible college could not teach me was to worship. What the Bible college could not teach me is to know what God has called me for. What the Bible college has not taught me is how to live by faith. What the Bible college has taught, not taught me is this, is how to have the authority of Jesus. Luke chapter 10. Now, when Lord Jesus trained his 12 disciples, he sent them to ministry. Um, let me read verse 17. Luke 10, 17. The 72 returned with joy, said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Verse 18. He said to them, I saw Satan falling like lightning from heaven. You see that? When he sent the disciples, when the disciples went, they prayed for people and their sicknesses were healed. When they prayed for people and even demons ran away. And Lord Jesus says, I saw that Satan fell from heaven. Those are the words of Lord Jesus, not mine. That is the authority you and I have, brothers and sisters. But most of the believers live without realizing that. One day what happened, there's a man who brought his child who had seizures. They, you know, Mark chapter 9 does it, so you don't have to look it up. Um, they brought to the same disciples who draw demons who heal the sick. And then um, the disciples could not drive out their demons. And then the, the same father comes to Jesus and said, I brought my child to your disciples and they could not drive out a demon. You know what Jesus says? You faithless generation, how long I have to be in you? And Jesus drives out the demon. And the disciples immediately come and ask, Lord Jesus, what is the secret that we were not able to drive out and you are able to drive out the people? You have given us the authority. What happened to our authority? You know what Lord Jesus says? These things will only come, only go away 
by prayer and fasting. Many of the disciples have forgotten prayer and fasting. That's why you don't have authority to do it at all. There's no authority, you just stand like a person who is not able to do anything before, you know, um, uh, powers of darkness, before evil, evil uh, uh, manifestations. You will not have power in your life. You know, prayer in private <coughs> gives power in public. You know, you will have no power in your life. Your prayer will not have power. Your words will have no power. Your, your preaching would have no power. Your life itself would not have any kind of power. Your witnessing would not have power. Unless you fast and pray. In our church, we have opened up every Friday. We'll pray till midnight. Come at 7 30, wait till 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, if you are willing to pray. But very few people show up to pray. You know, we are all interested in everything else, but for prayer, we don't have any importance. Because church is sleeping in this country. That is the primary problem. We don't understand that our lives have no power unless we really come and submit to the authority of Jesus. If Jesus gives that authority, you will be able to look at a mountain and say, I have a faith, go fall into the sea, you fall. Now, those are the words of Lord Jesus, not mine. So don't hate the messenger and say, hey, what is he saying? I'm saying this one message that Jesus said. If you pray, if you fast and pray, your lives will be so powerful. That no power of darkness can stand before you. Amen. Shall we say amen? amen? No sickness can stand before you. No darkness can stand before you. Believers are not really believing that anymore. They don't believe in really, they don't have faith, that's why they are not praying. You know, if you pray, if you trust in the Lord so much, God will empower you. And that is the mark of a true disciple. Let's quickly move. Matthew chapter 10 again. The second mark of a disciple, how Jesus really trained his disciples. Not just giving them some mental knowledge of teaching, but he gave them real authority. So it's beyond the mental knowledge of scripture, it is the authority. Secondly, Jesus taught them how to live by faith. Verse 9, Matthew chapter 10, verse 9. Acquire no gold or silver, nor copper for your belts, no bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals for a staff. For the laborer deserves his food. Whatever town or village you enter, first find out who is worthy in it and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, um, greet it, or some other translation say, it's a peace be to this house. If the house is worthy, let your peace will come upon it. And if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone is not willing to receive you, listen to your words, or shake off the dust from your feet. When you leave that house or town, truly I say to you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. What Jesus taught his disciples is this, how to live by faith. My dear brothers and sisters, no institution, again I say, I say that, um, is this, you know, what nobody can teach you, only the church is equipped to teach that. What Jesus is saying, we have to learn to live by faith. The disciples are the only ones who learn to live by faith. You know, he says, don't acquire gold or silver. You know what happened was this in the church history, if you look up um, in the 16th century, Martin Luther um, looked at all the practices of the church and says, your practices are all unbiblical. And he says, nobody, you cannot write a, a, a certificate of forgiveness for your sins. What church was doing is church was extracting money from people and saying, hey, if you give your money to the church, we will give you a certificate of forgiveness for your, that's called indulgence. Certificate of your forgiveness for your father, for your grandfather. What a, a terrible thing, how church was extracting money from uh, those who believe. Martin Luther rebelled against that. You know, what Martin Luther said is like this. You are not sharing the real gospel. He says, unless I am convinced by the scripture and plain reason, I cannot believe this. You know what Pope did? Pope took, Pope took Martin Luther. Pope took Martin Luther into the treasury of the church and said, Mr. Luther, Peter said silver and gold have I none. Come and look at our treasury. He opened the treasury and showed all the gold and silver and said, take how much you want and then just be quiet. Martin Luther looked at the Pope. You know what he said? He said like this. You may say silver and gold I have, 
But you can never say, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Pope was ashamed. Luther rejected to take a single penny from the Catholic Church, washed off his hands and walked out. That's why he had the authority to preach. Pope was sold out for money. You see that? There are a ton of, ton of people who, want, who love the world and the things of this world more than their Lord. If you are a true disciple of Jesus, you will understand to live by faith. That is the biblical principle. Habakkuk said when Nebuchadnezzar the king uh, was coming to destroy entire Israel. You know what Habakkuk said, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4? The just shall live by faith, he said. If you are a righteous person, you will know how to live by faith. You will trust the Lord in the, midst, in the midst of adversity, in the midst of persecution, where an evil nation is coming and destroying the entire country. Only righteous people will live, he said. And the same principle, Apostle Paul takes from the Old Testament and says to the church, in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation, first unto the Jew and to the Gentile, for in all, so, all those who believe, for in it, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. For it is written, the just shall live by faith. You know, what Jesus taught his disciples is this. If you believe in the Lord, you'll take care of your every need. People are just worried about, oh, will I have enough savings? Will I have my enough 401ks? Will I have enough pension? Will I have enough things for my children? And so worried about our material needs. My dear brothers and sisters, your material needs definitely we need food. We need clothing, we need shelter, we need things for all. If, don't let me, con don't, don't you be consumed with all that your thoughts. Jesus said like this, seek ye first, you know, his kingdom and his righteousness. Everything will be. Some of you are listening. Seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness. Everything will be added to you. What Jesus taught his disciples is to live by faith. If you have faith like that. And then um, the third mark of a true disciple, Matthew chapter 10. The proof that you are a disciple of Jesus, I am your disciple of Lord Jesus, is that you will have that burden to share the gospel with others. That you want to make others your disciples. Or you might say, oh, I don't want to really share, but I'm scared. You know what is the major thing that will stop people from witnessing their testimony? Is fear is number one. Oh, what would others think of me? That shows that we have never denied ourselves. If you are thinking about what others think of me, you know, with a colleague, with a neighbor, with a friend, if, a, if the opportunity comes, you should say, you know, Jesus died for my sin. You should share with you how Jesus transformed your life and how he saved you. If you are not really sharing that, that means you are fearful of what people would think, we were in persecution. Persecution is too far. But Jesus did not tell to the disciples, okay, okay, whenever it is convenient, only then you share it. I know you'll be, people will talk bad about you. But you know, you should be watchful, man. Don't, don't, don't share whenever, you know, there are bad people. He never said that like that. Look at your Bible page, Matthew chapter 10. That's why your faith may not depend on my words, but your faith may depend on the word of God. Look at the word. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. These are hard words, but um, let me show this for you. Behold, I am sending you a sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. What Christians need to learn is this. The Lord is sending us a sheep. You know, that's a wonderful picture. That Jesus is a good shepherd and we are called his sheep. And sheep are no match for wolves, right? Can sheep fight? Sheep is the most, you know, um, ill-equipped, harmless creature. A sheep can never fight, can never put up a fight. Even goat can put up a fight, right? When the Lord comes, he will separate the sheep and the goat. Definitely. Goat will put up a fight, good fight. Um, probably you've seen the videos where a goat would just go after people and hit them. Probably many of you have seen those kind of things or incidents. But here, sheep, he's saying, I'm sending a sheep in the midst of wolves. And then he says like this, Beware of men, they will deliver you over to coats and flog you. 
What we need wisdom is this. We need to learn to be wise as serpents and at the same time harmless as doves. Jesus is preparing his disciples saying, if you share your testimony, if you share the word of God, if you share what Jesus has done for you, people will not like it. Be ready for it. Most of the time, um, what we like to be told is, you know, you will face persecution. We want easy, comfortable life. Lord Jesus said, in this world, you'll have tribulation. You know, probably living in America, if you don't share your testimony, you'll, the most comfortable life you'll have on the face of the earth. Think about the IRS officer, Uma Shankar. You've heard the testimony this week? From Chennai, he went out and he was talking about Jesus after his work. Government said, you are not supposed to preach Jesus. You will present government as an IS officer. But he said, I do my job diligently. I'm there at the office time. I'm doing my office work. But after six in the evening, when I'm not on the clock of government, what I do is my personal life. And then the government is saying, no, 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 you can't share about Jesus. There will be persecution by the brothers and sisters. You know, not only that, think about the believers in Iraq now. In Iraq, people are being beheaded for the sake of Christ Jesus. You know, if persecution comes, what will, what will be very clear is this. Who is a true believer and who is not a true believer? Who is a true Christian and who is not a true Christian? For when persecution comes, if you stand, that shows that you are a true believer. If you run for somebody, you know, we are so concerned what would people think of us when we share about Jesus. Leave alone, we are so far from persecution, living in the comfort of this country. There's one uh, seminary in Madhya Pradesh, in the Tarsi. Um, you know, the Thursday Bible study where we used to meet in, uh, in uh, Mount Prospect. Mount Prospect, right, Sir? Yes. Um, CLC, Christian Life Church. That pastor goes to Itarsi to preach in a seminary. Uh, every year there will be a bunch of graduates who will uh, graduate out of that seminary. And he will go there twice a year to, to, to teach the students. And they are really taught so that they will go and immediately um, serve the Lord. Parts of Madhya Pradesh, parts of Uttar Pradesh, parts of uh, Haryana. If somebody would stand in the corner of the street and start preaching, their life is obviously in danger. He says like this, by the time I go to graduation ceremony next year, I'll find a few of my uh, students who graduated last year would have been martyrs. They would have been killed. So that is the true state in, in, in India. You know, many states like that. Well, leave alone that far. You know, think about Hyderabad, think about other places too, even certain places you go share the gospel outside. People will be persecuted. But if the church is not prepared for it, you know, that's why Lord Jesus said to his disciples, I want to prepare you for persecution. That's why all the disciples were not scared because they hated themselves. You know, they, they loved it. They did not love their own lives as more of life. Um, I told you about Count Zinzendorf, you know, one of our online prayers. I showed you that video about uh, uh, a Moravian village, Hernhut village. If you ever go to Europe to, to take a trip or to Europe, visit that village. The village is still there. Um, you know, they had a prayer meeting. And can you guess how long the prayer meeting went on? 24 7 they prayed. Not for one day, not for two days, not for three days. Not for one month or a year. They took, you know, they took turns to pray. There would be a batch of 24 people. And seven people would come and pray, or three people would come and pray, and then another three people would come and pray, hour after hour after hour. And by God's grace, they have raised up people who would just pray like that. The prayer meeting lasted for 100 years. Can you imagine? If you go to that place, you know, what I've heard, I've not really seen that place, but it says, even if you touch the wall, people will be healed, it seems. You know, we are not promoting any kind of Christianity to get, you know, touch the walls and be healed. Uh, there are a lot of Christians who are selling, you know, sand from the Holy Land, uh, you know, water from
from Jordan. We are not subscribing. You are saying any of that. Please don't get into it. You know, don't get yourself sand from the Holy Land. Don't get yourself water from Jordan. You will not be. Um, the reason from that place that prayer meeting has impacted because of Moravian's prayer like that, that prayer has impacted William Carey to come to India. That prayer has impacted Adam Adam Jensen to go from this country. You know, great man of God just impacted because of that prayer. And they have taught about persecution. Persecution so much. There are people who, because of that, there are two people, two youngsters who rose up in front of one revival meeting. And they went to one African tribe. And they said, you know, if you come to share about Jesus here, we're going to kill you. You know what those two youngsters said? We don't love our lives anyhow. We are already dead. What will you kill us? And the African tribe said, these guys are not scared. Even if you tell them that we're going to kill them. Okay, because you guys are not scared of death, why don't you tell us what you have to say? They stood up and shared the gospel entirely to the Jesus. You see that? Unless you are dead to your own self, God cannot use you. That is the biblical truth. Lord Jesus was saying to Peter, I, have, I will be handed over to the Gentiles and they will be crucifying you. You know what Peter? Peter took our Lord Jesus aside and started rebuking our Lord. A minute before Lord Jesus said to Peter, this is Peter Petros and on this rock I will build my church. A couple of, day, couple of minutes later he says, get thee behind me, Satan. You have not put your mind on the things of God, but you have put your mind on the things of man, he says. Matthew chapter 16. The point is this. If you really love your life and think about persecution, oh, you're scared. You will never be a disciple of Christ Jesus. Jesus has prepared his disciples saying, you will be persecuted. Learn to stand up for your faith. Shall we say amen? Say, if you want to be true disciple of Christ Jesus, you will be hated by people. But great will be your reward. I told you several times how uh, each one of the disciples died. I told you a story again and again that Peter wanted to leave Rome. Peter wanted to leave Rome one day, and you know, the church in Peter, you know, at Rome said, Peter, you know, these Roman emperors will kill everybody. They are killing everybody. Your life is precious to the church. Why don't you leave Rome? <coughs> This is not written in the Bible, but historical books says so. It seems Peter took his baggage and was leaving. Jesus appeared at the end of the room and says, Peter, where are you going? He says, it seems that he asked, Lord, where are you going? He says, I'm going back to Rome, Peter, to be crucified the second time, said the Lord, it seems. Peter knew exactly what was the Lord Jesus reminding him. He put his back to uh, talk to Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus disappears and saves. He was reminded of his calling, went back to Rome. Peter was crucified upside down. The reason is he did not love his own life. That is a mark of a true disciple. If you love yourself, oh, I want to be saved all the time. We are not trusting the Lord. If you are, you do not love your life, the Lord will keep your life. Lastly, fear is the greatest enemy for making disciples, even for disciples. Gospel of Matthew chapter 26. Chapter, sorry, chapter 10, verse 26. Matthew chapter 10, verse 26. So have no fear for them, for nothing is covered that not be revealed of him. That will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say that in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim it on the house top. And do not fear for those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear them, for who can destroy both soul and body in hell? Jesus knows that his disciples are fearful people. You look at, you know, you read about the cross, you know, how Jesus went to the cross several, several times, but probably every Easter and Good Friday you read about it. May not be other times. You know, when Jesus was arrested, where are the disciples? All of them were scattered and they ran away. But one disciple followed him with a distance. Who is who's that disciple? One disciple followed Jesus from a distance. Peter was the one who decided, followed him. When, he, when Jesus was taken to Annas and Caiaphas, when Jesus is before Annas and Caiaphas, 
Peter always warming his hands, staying outside, the little girl comes and says, you ought to meet that you know, uh, Nazarene. You know what Peter says, no, 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 what, I don't know what you're talking about. Three times, the same Peter, like, like Jesus knew that his disciples were fearful people. And even after resurrection, we have read that accounts many times, Matthew chapter 28, for the fear of the Jewish people, disciples went and closed themselves in the room. You know? They are fearful people like you and me. But when they are filled with the Holy Spirit, the same Peter who said, I don't know who Jesus is, stands before the entire Jewish council and says, should I fear God or should I fear you? What, what happened to Peter? Complete transformation. You know, Christians are so scared of um, what others think of me. What, you know, if I share about, if I talk about Christ, I want to make disciples, but I'm scared. Like Jesus is saying, don't fear people. They can do nothing to you. Fear God, he says. You're thinking about, they'll beat you up. You know, we talk about persecution. You might have seen the, the videos of how people are being beheaded in Iraq by ISIS. How many of you have seen that, those kind of, at least pictures, may not be videos. You won't see those kind of, you know, if a situation comes like that, will you really stand or will you run? You know, when the persecution comes, you, that doesn't mean that, you know, you just have to stay there and face Jesus and, you know, run from one city to another. That's what people have been doing in Iraq now. They're taking their families and they're going. They're scared of their own lives, fearful. But the Spirit of God comes to you. You will know, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the fear will be gone. Whether you live or die, you will live and die for the Lord. Jesus said like this, and he gives a wonderful example. I want you to read this please, verse 29. Matthew chapter 10, verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? One sparrow's worth is half a penny. Not one of them will fall to ground without the Father's knowledge, apart from the Father says. When one sparrow falls, the Lord takes a lot of it. And then he says to his disciples, those who are scared, if you are fearful today, the Lord is speaking to you. Word says next week, even the hairs of your head are numbered. God keeps account. For some, keeping the account is much easier, right? We have very few here. God has easier job. <laughs> but some will run up there, brush their hair, bunch of hair and fall. God will update his database. <laughs> God is so mindful about you. When one sparrow falls, he takes a note. He says, Are you not more precious than them? God is keeping account of your hairs. That is beyond our account. That's how much he cares for you. Oh, then every time you stand before the mirror, you think about it. From tomorrow onwards. The point is this, don't be scared for your life. The Lord will keep your life in the midst of every persecution. If you are a true disciple of Jesus, you will have the authority of Jesus. No power of darkness will be able to stand before you. If you are the true disciple of Lord Jesus, you will know how to live by faith. That's what we have learned from Matthew chapter 10. What Jesus taught his disciples is not just some biblical mental knowledge, but really a life that is completely transformed. Now we don't just come here on Sunday service just to listen to some good sermon and you know increase our Bible knowledge. You can sit at home and read the entire Bible. Now the Bibles are available in every electronic gadget imaginable, right? In all versions available. Think about people who did not have even Bible. Jesus is not interested in people who only are biblically literate. You win all the Bible and yet not follow him. That would be the greatest tragedy. Do not be hearers only by deceiving yourselves. If you only hear, you deceive yourself. If you do, you are a disciple of Christ Jesus. Even the devil knows all the scripture. You know, the devil knows the scripture through and through. But, you know, he's not the one who's doing it. Now, if you make your aim to be a true disciple of Christ Jesus, this is our aim to go for 2015 for Chicago Bible Fellowship. That our, everybody who comes and calls CBF as our church, 
Should not be just listeners that sit down and, you know, just enjoy the presence of God and go back home. But I want to live for the sake of Christ. Shall we close our eyes for two minutes? Think about our own lives. God help me to be that disciple this week.